Okay, we are live. Finally starting to get the hang of this uh, StreamYard, uh, what's it called, software. Sorry, just blanking out for a second. But, yeah, getting the hang of the StreamYard thing. Uh, for some reason, I used to use OBS to live stream, but... Oh, someone just joined. Um, let me add him. Hello. Hello, John. How are you? Good, how are you? Fine. My channel, uh, I did that live stream last night. I got talking to the AMX 40. Yeah. I was asleep, right, and then I got talking to him for the last an hour and a half or so. And I woke up this morning, the video was deleted. I can't live stream to my channel. <laughs> wow. And I put a live, uh, live stream the video of Fitzhugh, this uh, of Catherine Fitz, um, you know, about the COVID vaccine and the, you know, all this stuff. Yeah. Wow. Um, well, they yeah, they, they definitely don't want the truth about this uh, Jesuit COVID, you know, scamdemic coming out. No. Well, they called it, oh yeah, that's what they called it, uh, medical misinformation. Oh. Yeah, I'm not a doctor, you know, but I mean, I'm entitled to an opinion, and if I agree with somebody else's opinion on it, I think they should be allowed to share it. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's basically, you know, it, it goes back to this thing of the science falsely so-called, you know, these yeah, scientists, exactly. you know. Yeah, on, yeah. People yeah. know I mean, well, no, they don't ignore it. Um, they don't really think about it and think, hold on, is science, as, I mean, God's saying it, it's in there, the Holy Spirit, it's, it's in it, in Scripture, science falsely so called. Yeah. So it's false about science. I mean, there is genuine science. Well, well, true science will line up with the King James Bible. Yeah, like it's flat. Yeah. Uh, and the stationary. There's a um, verse of scripture I want to turn to about this science okay. thing. It, it, it's like in Romans 1 talks about, you know, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Yeah, um, yeah but uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 20. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoid profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called. Yeah. You know, it's not real science, it's science falsely so called. Yeah, evolution is another one. Yeah. I mean, we use the same evidence that a creationist would use. Yeah. They just, I mean, people would say, oh, they, you would say that, wouldn't you? But they, they twist the facts out of shape. They can't even make sense of the stuff. Yeah, they can't. I mean, it, it's like, and, 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 then when, and then when you question them, you know, they, they'll completely deflect. I mean, because I've dealt with these people. These atheists and stuff, and you know they just, they just will not admit to being wrong, and you know it comes down to pride mostly, but yeah. it, it's ridiculous. Did you ever look at that red pen logic thingy that I sent you? Uh, oh, I, for, I forgot to check it out. All right, it's okay, no big deal, John. I just put it there in case you might agree. Hmm. There's it's actually so some, some pretty crazy stuff I wanted to show you actually, um, with regards to some of these Jesuits and stuff, and. I'll just share my screen real quick, but it's uh, pretty crazy. So there's one article on, on Breitbart News. Uh, it says, Jesuit priest says the Bible might be wrong about homosexuality. Oh, you know? <laughs> Wow. Which, you know, proves the point that the Jesuits, the Catholics don't believe the Bible because they can just change it whenever they feel like it. But it says... They would say the Bible is wrong about homosexuality. We would say God, uh, God's word is perfectly correct about sodomy. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, you know I'll, I'll read... Well, they just see it as a book. Yeah, well, they, they see it as... Well, it's a authority, but ultimately the Pope is the final authority because he's yeah. the substitute son yeah. of God and all this other blasphemous stuff. Yeah. Well, I'll just read the article real quick. It says... Um, do. Please do. Yeah, it says, uh, LGBT promoter Father... J father, you know, call no man your father. Um, yeah. James Martin has questioned whether the biblical condemnation of homosexual behavior might be may be mistaken, uh, referring to an exam the example of slavery. So you're saying oh, it could be mistaken. Citing a recent essay on the topic as interesting, uh, 
uh, it says the Jesuit priest tweeted uh, late Wednesday. This, this article is from about um, when was it written? So it, it was last year, October of last year, uh, 2019. It says this is, this is the Jesuit priest saying this. Where the Bible mentions same sexual behavior at all, it clearly condemns it. I freely grant that. The issue is precisely whether the biblical judgment is correct. The biblical, the Bible sanctions slavery as well, and nowhere attacked it as unjust. You know. So well, basically, what he's saying is that what what he's that. saying, what? It depends what kind of slavery they're referring to. Oh yeah. You know. I mean, is is it is it the slaves that the Catholic Church used to have, and you know, during the Inquisition and everything? And I wonder if it's referring to that. No. But it, it just shows that you know the, the Catholics they they basically think they're above the Bible because oh, yeah. basically they don't correct the Bible. They, they the Bible doesn't correct them; they correct the Bible. Yeah. Well, it's like that so-called quote with uh, or was it Matthew six? Uh, the, uh, the Lord's Prayer. Prayer. Yeah, trying to change the word of God. Yeah. Uh, oh, I mean, just be. I mean, it's a bit like Jacob Thompson. It's just beyond. But it's staggeringly. I'm lost for words, John. You know what I mean? Um, well, it is definitely like like Jacob Thompson because what what. And that's why I compare Jacob Jacob Thompson to the Pope is because he's he's they are setting themselves they are setting themselves above the scriptures to where you have to listen to them now basically and not the yeah. scriptures basically. Yeah. Oh, it's got to be Jacob's book, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. In I, I got his book and you know pretty 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 blasphemous statement. He said, "Oh, you know the defend of God to who God is. You know if you don't believe this book or whatever, like you're unsaved or something." Yeah, I'm just glad you didn't give him any money, John. Yeah, I wasn't planning on it. I mean, I was actually, back when I was part of the Brian cult, I actually was telling Jacob, you know, hey, where's your book going to be at? I'll buy it. Uh, but if, if I was still in the Brian cult when the book came out, I would have said I would I would not have bought it, just with the front cover alone. Um, yeah. Just a weird image on the front cover. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, these Catholics... Uh... But they do let the cat out of the bag. I think I mentioned it on another live stream. With you know, when they did like uh, Blue Planet, Richard Attenborough. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard of him. Uh, in this country, he's quite famous. He's almost a household name. But they do let us slip. Oh, you should see the design of this, that, and the other creature. You know, in the, in the sea or you know, in the jungle. They do let the, the word design slip out. Yeah, they do. Uh, and I just watching. I was going to watch a film because I was watching, and then it started going. It was a space thingy, uh, or space film, something. Not NASA or anything. Mm. But the dialogue in it was always oh, proved beyond that any shadow of a doubt. There's life in space. I thought, oh, I don't want to hear that. I mean, they inject all this propaganda in the movies through Hollywood and all that stuff. Yeah. I just, I just closed the tab on it, John. I don't blame you. It's, you know, it, it's all this propaganda and all this other, you know, garbage in yeah. Hollywood and all this other stuff. And, and you know. Sorry about the background. I thought I mute my mic. And I'm not Was there a police car there or something? I can never tell really whether it's police or ambulance. Uh, Mainly ambulance, though, I think. Yeah. yeah. It probably could be. I mean, I, I live I live in kind of, I live just down the street from kind of a, I mean, I, I'm not in the city or anything. I, I kind of live more in kind of a rural area, but the downtown area is kind of not, just down the street from where I live. Yeah. And I do hear sirens constantly. Well, I, I, it doesn't make common sense that the police would need a siren. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the flashing lights, yeah, but a siren just tells the criminals, the naughty people, that you're on the way. Yeah, that's kind of the thing. If you're like, if, if you say, okay, that's the guy we're after, you chase after and turn on your siren and your lights, and that just alerts them, oh, crap, they're after me. Let me speed up so they can't catch up to me and stuff, and, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's usually just to get through traffic, isn't it? So you can use yeah. lights for that. Well, yeah, because people have people have to pull over, so you, yeah. there's a benefit to that. 
I, I don't really celebrate New Year. I think it's big in Scotland, John. Uh, mm. Are you having any sort of celebration type thing? I know you're not into all these festivals and things, you know. Yeah, I'm not into like, you know, holy days, that kind of stuff. But, you yeah. know, just for the sake of it, I might be staying up till midnight tonight just, just for the sake of it. Yeah. So, I mean, I was going to see, I was going to go live tonight. AMX 40 was going to come in. And I was going to have another chat with him in the studio. I'm going to have to wait a whole week now before I can. Wow. Twice now, that's two strikes I've got, I think. Wow. And I was only showing, like, I was screencasting somebody else's video. There was a couple of other videos about the, oh, I was showing a, a clip from Twitter of the uh, police arresting this woman for filming the inside of a hospital. It just happened to be probably empty. The police came and arrested her for doing it. Wow. That's his country. Huh. Crazy. Yeah. Well, the American USA police are doing it on at least one occasion, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I had a, I had a doctor phone me this morning about the injury and stuff. They asked me about the vaccine. I said, there's no way I'm taking the vaccine. And it, 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 in, in, in a million years, the phone being six months, the answer will be the same. Oh, well, they'll phone you anyway. And not gonna make I said, well, it doesn't make any difference. I still won't be taking it. Well, yeah, I won't be taking, you know, because vaccines are all kinds of, of harmful substances and toxic materials. And, yeah. you know, you're basically injecting poison into your skin. That's what vaccines are. Yeah. Well, Here, here's another fun, here's another funny it. article too. Actually, um, I think this is uh, again on, on Breitbart News. Uh, let's see how this works. Still starting to get the hang of the stream here thing, but uh, privilege. Yeah, yeah, it, it yeah it says uh, Jesuit led parish asked parishioners to take pledge affirming uh, white privilege must must end. You know, well, you yeah. know when they end slavery in this country, John. I mean, obviously I wasn't there. It was two hundred years ago. I'm not that old, you know. Yeah, exactly. But slaves in this country, if you think about it, I'm not saying I'm not saying there weren't abuses. I'm sure there were. There always is when you got people involved. But I'm sure I'm confident that the slaves that they had in this country were better looked after, treated better than those white people, ordinary people that were in the workhouses that we used to have in this country. Yeah, yeah I mean, ex exactly. I mean, and, and you know, they're, I mean, they're fed. And, and the thing is, is that um, now you're seeing kind of a reversal now. So now where white people are now being victimized and, you know, yeah. it's like, and, and yet, like they still talk about white privilege when it's like, you know, White people yeah. are constantly demonized, and it's like it's always a white man's fault and everything. It's ridiculous. Mark, we have heard of him. Yeah. yeah. They're using, I don't know how far you would go with this. I've heard it so many, three or four, five or six times over the last year or two, probably more, about, uh, oh, I can't remember the exact word. That they're using material from baby, from fecal, not fecal, if I see, fecal, you know, baby... Um, yeah, if baby tissue and stuff like that. Something like that. I don't, I'm not sure what the proper way it is. I mean, any vaccine is a foreign, it's foreign to your body anyway, so... You know, we've got an immune system. Oh, I had George Carlin on the screen as well. I mean, it, okay... Yes, I know he swears. He swears like a British Navy guy, you know, but he gets the point across. But, I mean, he was only staging... I mean, we've been given an immune system, by God, it's built in, John. Oh, yeah. To fight all these viruses. 
Yeah, that that's the thing is that you know if 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 we are just doomed without these pills and vaccines, then what what I mean, what in the world did people do before vaccines and pills and medicine was invented? You know, I mean, yeah. God made God made God didn't make you just so you just would just get it and just not survive. He made your body to be able to fight. I mean, that's the point of why you have red, like white blood cells to fight off bacteria and stuff. I mean, oh, your body is is so equipped crazy. to fight these viruses. That's the thing. I mean, you don't, you like, it, it's like since when do you does do you need a pill for everything or you need like a vaccine for everything, you know? Mm-hmm. And and even then, there's still are plenty of, of natural like medicine, natural. Well, yeah, you there's know, tons of it. there's a cure for everything in those jungles, John. Yeah. There's a cure for everything. You don't have to synthesize everything. You always want to synthesize stuff, make it an artificial sort of replica of the real thing. If you want a cure for cancer, I'm sure they could find one in in, in jungle medicine. In, I don't know. I mean, do they bother looking into it? Well, no, because the pharmaceutical industry is making trillions a year. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a big money making thing. There's actually a sermon, and, and you know there there are areas of doctrine that I don't agree with uh, Pastor Jason Cooley on, but he yeah. he got two really good sermons, uh, exposing the fact that a lot of these like antidepressant things, a lot of these antidepressant medicine and and that kind of stuff actually lead to more suicide and, and lead to all kinds of other health problems and, and yeah. stuff. And and the pharmaceutical industry, you know, I mean, I think he put it is that they're basically just drug dealers with a white coat, and that's yeah. what, that's all they are. <laughs> That, you know, that is an understatement. I mean, the people that own and pay for the Food and Drug Administration in the USA, I don't know what they call it in the UK, they're funded by GlaxoSmithKline, uh, um, who's that other company now, uh, where they're doing the GMO food. Um, oh, I'll think of it in a minute. But it, it's all government, uh, not government, uh, corporate, controlled by Earl Halliburton. Yeah. Brothers, you know, massive, massive company. There's actually a website about about that, actually, Um, which, like, yeah, I mean, obviously it's controlled by these massive companies, and what they do is that, they, and I think Pastor Cooley brought this up in his sermon, they actually will make up these type of mental problems, like, like ADHD or OCD, that kind of stuff, uh, when the problem is not that your kid is a problem, the problem is mostly it could be because he needs more discipline or that kind of stuff. Yeah. But they'll make up these these conditions to say, okay, here here's a pill for that, and then you know you get money, yeah. you get the money. But a bit like Ritalin, isn't it, John? Yeah, I'm not saying Ritalin can't help, but most of the time they over prescribing it. And, and I, I would encourage anyone who like thinks it's good to take these pills, just take time to research some of the side effects of these things and. Yeah. You'll be shocked. But here's here's actually an article on a website called drugwatch.com. And it brings talking about, you know, suicide and antidepressants. And um, I think I think Pastor Cooley read this article in one of his sermons, but it says that while antidepressants are designed to decrease symptoms of depression, they occasionally have the opposite effect and, and, and can increase suicidal thoughts and actions, especially in children and adolescents. Especially when your brain is still developing too, because your brain isn't fully developed till you're 25, I think. And that's the key word there, your brain, it could, it could damage your brain. Once the brain, uh, damage you've been done to your brain, I mean, uh, I think a certain amount of, you can come back from it a bit. But once the damage is done to your synapses, that's it really, isn't it? It just gets worse. Yeah, I mean, like I'm 19 years old, but I'm still, like my brain is still developing. It's, it won't be fully developed till I'm 25. So it's like, you know, these pills they mess up your brain yeah but i'll I'll keep reading it says um in 2004 the u.s food and drug administration uh issued a black box warning the agency's strictest warning for all selective uh serotonin hope i'm saying that right uh repute repudic uh in i'm not good at reading some of these fancy names uh antidepressants basically ssri antidepressants regarding their association with suicidal thoughts and behaviors the warning was updated in 2007 with the fda fda specifying that the risk is highest for your young adults ages 18 to 24 so when your brain is still developing children under 18 are still at risk or i mean are also at risk too it says Clinical studies found no significant increase of suicidality among adults older than 24 
uh, and a decrease in suicidal thoughts among adults 65 and older. Yeah, because your brain is, is already developed at that point. But like when your brain is still developing, you shouldn't just be shoving these these drugs that will affect your brain. Uh, so as many SSRIs are intended to, uh, to use for uh, in adults only, but they can be prescribed to children. Uh, why, why are you prescribing that to children? That's a question there. Uh, teens and young adults uh, as, as an off-label treatment of depression and anxiety disorders. Pregnant women face a unique challenge with SSRIs. Pregnancy can increase the risk of depression, uh, but SSRIs may in also increase uh, birth, defects, birth defect risks. Without treatment uh, for depression, pregnant women may face additional health risks. The most severe cases may include miscarriage or suicide. Doctors and parents must carefully weigh these risks against those of SSRI and birth defects. So, you know, causes birth Jim, defects. Not capable, not, most people are not capable of assessing the risk. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, obviously, we know there's a risk because we know that any 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 pills and stuff you take that dissipates or whatever you call it into the bloodstream is going to go into your baby. What does exactly, that yeah. I mean, John? Sorry, I, mean, I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, but, that's okay. It's okay. Um, I'll keep that's reading. Okay. It says, yeah. I'll keep reading. So it says, um, how do SSRIs increase suicidal thoughts? Patients who take, and again, SSRIs are just basically antidepressants. Oh. Uh, patients oh. who take SSRIs may experience side effects such as violent behavior, uh, with mania, or aggression, which can all lead to suicide. Uh, depression is a complex issue caused by biological, genetic, environmental, and psychological factors. SSRIs are generally thought to treat depression by blocking the reuptake of serotonin to the, in the brain. This leads to higher levels, higher levels of serotonin in the brain. Uh, neurotransmitter thought are thought to uh, positive, positively influence mood, sleep, and emotion. So mm -hmm. it's like messing with your brain, basically. Yeah. But this can result in mood swings and may lead to, to a worsening of depression or anxiety. Uh, taking more than the recommended dose or suddenly stopping the use of antidepressants can increase a patient's chance of experiencing suicidal thoughts and behaviors. Uh, yeah. What begins as withdraw withdrawing from friends and social and activities and a loss of interest and in work can escalate to harming oneself. In clinical trials and public use, there have been cases where the antidepressant users have thought about or attempted or actually committed suicide. A clinical trial conducted by the FDA showed that the rate of suicidal thinking or behavior doubled for patients taking SSRIs compared to those assigned to relieve <coughs> place bows. I think that's how you say it. Uh, more than 44,000 people die by suicide uh, in the U.S. each year, according to the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Among those who are diagnosed with major depressive disorder, MDD, roughly 15% of treated patients will eventually die of suicide. Very uh, unfortunate. Yeah. And it goes on I mean, there. When I was in jail, right, I don't want to bore anybody with, the, with these little anecdotes. When I was in the first six years of the sentence, I was at guard for between 83 and 86. And uh, we used to, have, I mean, we used to laugh at it, but now I don't. We used to have a like actual cue, John. There'd be a, like a medical hat, you know, where you go to get medical treatment. There'd be a, a hat in the side of the wall on this big corridor between uh, B and C wing. And they'd, they'd all be queuing up. There'd be about 10 or 20 of them. First, as soon as that hatch is open, or as soon as the gate opens, they're down there into the like, what we call a like actual cue to get a little tot of green fluid. And then they'd be monged out for the rest of the day till they got another top that evening. Mm, not surprised. Plenty of suicides in jail. Well, yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, you know, and, and who who runs the jail industry? Obviously, it ties all all roads lead to Rome. All all of this ties back to the Jesuit order. There, are, you know, a lot of these these doctors are Jesuits. A lot of them. Yeah. Well, there is one big company that most people have never heard of it, and when I looked at it, when that. But it's, it's associated with the prison system. I'll type it into the private chat because I, I, I can't type into these things. But it's the biggest company that most people on this earth have never heard of. But they, the, the amount of, I mean, they run prisons in this country. They've been accused of abuse in, in young persons' prisons. Uh, 
killing people in the prison grounds, you know, in the transport uh, inmates. So oh, wow. Group four. Yeah, I guess I'll I guess I'll keep reading the article though. Okay. Oh, um, uh, it's okay. You know, I, I found it interesting actually. Um, yeah. So it says uh, restlessness. So it says stimulant effects may lead to may lead to suicide. So one of the side effects of these these pills is basically you just can't sit still. You're restless basically. Uh, antidepressants have also been linked to uh, aca. How do you say that? Aca Whatever. Uh, basically, this condition where you just can't sit still. Uh, which is extreme restlessness and an inability to sit still. The discomfort can be so great, uh, suicide becomes a welcome alternative to feeling this kind, this type of ag- agitation. Uh, sometimes, you know, it's misdiagnosed uh, as worsening depression. So, like, basically this thing of where they just can't sit still, they have to constantly be moving around and stuff. Um, that's one of the side effects of these things. Uh, at least one antidepressant, Prozac, uh, can have a stimulant effect similar to... Uh, Whatever. I'm not good at reading some of these big, huge scientific names. Uh, and whatever. I'm not going to bother. But you get the whole picture. Um, basically, these these antidepressants don't... I mean, they do help sometimes. But all the side effects are pretty bad. Study finds increased anxiety in healthy patients. You know. So, so these antidepressants are not really helping your depression. They make, In some cases, they're making it worse. So, uh, those SSRI, the downer, are they or an upper? Um, I I would say that like personally, I I wouldn't take them, uh, just because of the side effects, really. Yeah. yeah. Do those SSRI suppress feelings and things like that? Do they or just? Your brain or... I, I think what they do is that they they can because I think I think said something about how they what they do is that they like I think they stop the level of serotonin that comes to your brain so yeah. they I don't know I mean I'll have to look at it again but it talks about um where does it say that um there's like a part of the article that talks about how they work and whatever and uh it, it, yeah so it says it says basically what depression is is that it's a complex issue caused by biological genetic environmental and psychological factors and these ssris they treat depression by blocking uh the reuptake of serotonin into the brain and it basically leads to higher levels of serotonin in the brain which uh, is a newer which a neurotransmitter thought to pause thought to positively influence mood. So it, what it does is that it, it does it does things with the serotonin level to where it affects your positively positivity and your influence. Sorry, it, it positively affects your influence, mood, and uh, sleep and emotion. So it, it has a positive influence on it. Um, but the side effects really kind of outweigh the good. Yeah, yeah. Nobody understands the brain anyway, John. I mean, it's been researching the brain for hundreds of years yeah i mean the brain is a really complex uh organism it's it's like you know i mean i mean like for example you have your prefrontal cortex which isn't fully developed here 25 which is related to like a good decision making you know smart decisions that kind of stuff yeah. Which actually, a uh, little side note, um, studies have actually shown that pornography, like being addicted to pornography and looking at pornography can actually, uh, it actually does damage to your prefrontal cortex, which can yeah. actually uh, reduce your brain to a more, um, I think it was like delayed, a uh, developmentally delayed state to where like you can, ha- you can have an adult, you can be an adult, but have like a adolescent or childish brain basically. So it, it yeah. messes with your prefrontal cortex and makes your brain become more juvenile and childish. Yeah. Can we just go on about, I'm not trying to, that word synthesize, that sounds as though it comes, what it does come from that uh, Hegelian dialectic, you know, thesis, antithesis, yeah. synthesis. So, I mean, synthesizing, I don't know what the, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's like GMO food, isn't it? It's GMO everything in it yeah, exactly yeah 
And isn't it kind of funny too that a lot of these conditions, like these health problems, didn't actually weren't around in the ancient times, weren't around in the Middle Ages. Uh, they mm. only started recently with the chemicals and the food and and all this other stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's true, John. I mean, nobody, was, I don't think anybody was taking tablets in the before the 18th century. I don't think. I mean, they may well have been doing so. so I mean, I think a lot of them were into opium. I, I mean, people back in the Middle Ages didn't have to worry about EMF, EMF rays or rays, or you know, EMF rays as in like you know microwaves and that kind of stuff, and you know they didn't have to worry about uh, I think it was micro radiation or something. Because uh, a fun, uh, interesting fact about the Wi-Fi, like Wi-Fi boxes that produce Wi-Fi, um, a lot of these like Wi-Fi machines actually uh, produce I think it's micro microwave radiation or something like that, yeah. and. Uh, that's why it's really good if you leave the house to turn the Wi-Fi off, so it like, doesn't just fill your house with microwave radiation. But you know, this stuff wasn't a problem back in the Middle Ages. They didn't have to worry about EMF rays or microwave radiation in the house or stuff like that, or you know, GMO chemicals in the food. It, it's it's ridiculous, you know. Well, I mean, it will cook you. I mean, when I was in the army, I don't want to come out with these anecdotes. I don't want to do that. When I was in the army, I was in the signal platoon. In the infantry, we had a what's called a ground mounted monopole for transmitting and receiving signals 50 watts. I accidentally touched the antenna, I burnt my fingers on it, John. Mm. Wow, it was quite low frequencies. These microwaves, they're in the uh, well, hundreds of gigawatt uh, gigacycles, aren't they? Very, very high frequencies, yeah. It will agitate the molecules or whatever in your brain and cook you. And, and you know what's funny about all this? When you all trace it back, it all traces back to there's a, like a Jesuit behind this or a Jesuit influenced this, or it always traces back to the Jesuit order. You know, all roads still lead to Rome. Yeah. All the, yeah. Yeah, they got the fingers in every time. Yeah. Well, they make me ill. Yeah, they, well, they definitely do, yeah. Well, yeah, in one way, just in one. Yeah. yeah. And, and then you got this Jesuit priest who's, like, saying, well, the Bible could be wrong about this, so it's, like, correcting the Bible now and, you know, yeah, all, all this crazy stuff. I mean, the, the Jesuits, they, like, they may seem all nice when you first hear about them, but, like, really, when you dig down to it, they're, they're super wicked. When, like, when you, like, dig deep into them and that kind of stuff and, you know... Yeah. I mean, Eric Phelps definitely knows a lot about the Jesuits too, and oh, you know, yeah. I mean, I, I'd say they are probably one of the most wicked organizations in the history of mankind. So the whole we did all center of the Jesuits. Oh, you mean the Jesuits? Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and and then Southern Poverty Law Center. I mean, those guys apparently apparently their founder uh, was actually fired apparently from his job. Uh, as like basically director of the Southern Poverty Law Center for I think sexually harassing somebody. So it's like yeah. their founder is a pervert basically. Yeah. Yeah. And and they put his church on there as a hate group because they exposed the Jesuit order and exposed the wickedness of the Jesuits and then the, the Roman yeah. Catholic Church. Yeah. I mean Eric Eric does have his faults, of course he does. I mean we can say that of anybody, any Christian. But when when, he, when he's doing, I mean, he gets angry, John. Mm. Uh, I mean, oh, I, I I respect that. That tells me how genuine he is. He doesn't start swearing. No, oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, why do people? I mean, even Brian Denlinger, he had an interview with Eric John Phelps, and he hasn't had him back on since. Well, yeah, there there is a video. I, I think I sh I have a clip of it where. You know, uh, because apparently Eric Phelps is, is, you know, a Trinitarian. He's, he's like, big on the Trinity. And, you know, him and Brian were going back and forth over email or something like that, over, like, the Trinity versus Godhead thing. And, you know, I, I'm not the kind of person who would call somebody lost who believes in, in the Trinity. I mean, I don't, think it's, I don't think it's a salvation issue. But I guess Brian probably thinks it's a separation issue, someone's belief on the Godhead. So he um, basically... There's a video he did called a straight betwixt two where like doing I think it was either that or 
I don't know, there was some stream he did or whatever. I'm not, I don't remember what, what it was called. But I have the clip of him saying it where someone points out to him how, how like, Eric Phelps was, like, talking about some person denies the Trinity. And they're saying, oh, we're talking about Brian. And then Brian says, yeah, you know, Brian says that basically Phelps is a heretic and he doesn't want anything to do with him anymore. And and that, you know, he, he, he said, oh, well, I very much respected Phelps, but, you know, I don't want anything to do with him anymore. And, um, I mean, that's that's kind of the thing. with a basketball coach, John. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and you know, yeah, he is a Trinitarian, and I don't, I don't agree with him on the Trinity. I mean, obviously, I'm not. I'm, I do believe in, in the body, soul, spirit, Godhead, but at the same time, I don't believe the Trinity. I mean, nor does the Scripture say that the Trinity or Godhead is like a salva, is like a separation issue. It never says that anywhere in Scripture. I mean, if someone's outright denying that Jesus Christ is God or, or like teaching oneness, then yeah, that's a problem. But you know. You know, it's 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 kind of it's kind of like you know making a big issue or something that is not like shouldn't be made a big issue. I mean, because it's not like Trinitarians um, deny that Jesus Christ is God. They they say he's God, uh, but they just don't say he's like the body of the Godhead or, or whatever. But you know, as long as long as they're still claiming he's God, then like if they're denying he's God, if they're saying he's the Son but not God or something like that, but. They're still yeah. saying he's God, so it's like I don't see a problem with that. Although I still believe in the Godhead, and I'll always believe in the Godhead. Well, who sat on the throne? I mean, who am I to explain God? John? I'm a nobody. Well, yeah, exactly. Great is the mystery of godliness. This is an argument that's been going on, I think, for nearly well, seventeen or eighteen hundred years. Yeah. You know, uh, who can explain God? Nobody can. Yeah. Oh, and, then, and then you got like they, they, they got. Yeah, you know, then you got Diotrephes Deering, Deering coming out and yeah, saying all this. Say, turned up. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's like the, it's like then you got Diotrephes Deering who's saying you know oh there's no such thing as the saved Trinitarian. So in other words, the gospel is believe in the death, burial, resurrection, and the Godhead apparently. So it's like, um, no, I mean it's not a salvation issue as long as, as long as they're not denying that Jesus Christ is God, then they're still saved. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like they're coming out and saying, like, like this Chris Lasala guy, he's he's a heretic. He's he he came out and said, I did a video on him. He he came out and said that Jesus Christ is the Son, but he's not God Almighty. Uh, yeah, that, that someone like that's a heretic because they're saying he's not God, um, which he is. But you know, it, it's like they're they're taking this thing way too far. Yeah, I think it's quite dangerous ground. I mean. Saying that somebody's not saved. I mean, uh, I mean, I have stated that. I mean, it's very rare that I do it, but it's, I have stated that I do not believe that I'm dealing with saved. But I'm not going to that discernment that he is a saved man. I'd like to. I'd like to believe that he is. But the way he's been dealing with people in the last, uh, well, I would say two months, but I think it goes back a lot further because I don't know anything about what's been going on with him. You know better than me, John, but I find it very difficult to believe that he's a saved man. Well, yeah, and you know, I've mentioned before that I've had problems with them even back when I was part of the Brian group, and like I, n I never got a good spiritual feeling with them. But you know, this is kind of the problem is that uh, he basically will just call you lost over any little thing you do, without without like because my thing is is that my my kind of thing is that I. I'm not going to call somebody lost if I don't know them personally. I mean, I want to get to know the person personally, because if they, if he would know, if he were to know, I mean, if he is saved, obviously, but you know, if the Denlingerites were to know me personally, they would, they would know that we're both Christians. Um, yeah. The problem yeah. with 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 online, with just solely being online, is that like you you just see them online, like you don't know what they're really like. And <laughs> it, it was like with Aaron, you know, he had he had a persona of holiness online, but then offline, he's like this dirty pervert. So, well, you know. I mean, the other thing is, John, I'm sure you've probably noticed this, uh, Aaron Deering, he, either he hasn't read Jacob's book, or he has, but he hasn't said a thing about it, and I've done three or four or five videos about that skanky book of his, yeah. and I'm, I'm confident, it's just an opinion, that Aaron Deering has seen my video regarding Jacob Thompson's book, he hasn't not a peep out of him. Yeah. I sometimes wonder, you know, I, I just don't understand where 
for all these young kids, like these young, like little, like, like and obviously I'm a young person too, but it's like where all these young kids come out and just think they have the authority to just call everybody lost who doesn't agree with them or, you know, and, and it's like, 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 like correcting people and rebuking people. Uh, and, and like, you know, and, and it's like, obviously like you should rebuke false prophets, but it's like, you know, it, it's like a lot of these young kids who just come out of Brian's group are just, a lot of them are extremely prideful and won't, won't take correction on anything and just, it's like, they're right. And you know, it's like, if you disagree with them, you're, you're a horrible person. I mean, it's, it's like, I don't understand where these young kids get this mentality of, of they're qualified for ministry and, and, you know, they can just call everybody lost and, and. It, it's like whatever Brian says is the truth, and if you don't agree with Brian, you're lost. That's what that's what they're like. How old is Jacob, by the way? I, th- I think I think he's I think he's younger than Aaron, actually, from what I understand. He's I, I he's he's, he, he's even younger than Aaron. Twenty two or twenty four or something. Hey, he, I I think Aaron is about twenty three, twenty four. I think J- Jacob is J J T. I think he's about um like twenty one or like twenty or twenty one. I think. Yeah. And it, it's even more crazy too is that you know I, I've always said that my standard for ministry is I wouldn't ordain somebody for ministry until they're at least in their 30s so Jake JT he got into ministry when he was basically like 20 or he was like 19 years old and he'd only been saved for like a year and and it's like but he thinks he's but he thought he was but he basically thinks okay I've been saved for only about a year I'm only 19 years old but I'm somehow qualified for ministry it's like you know, where, where do these young kids get this mentality that they're somehow qualified when they've only been saved for a year and they're like in their like early twenties? It's weird. It comes from a place of pride too. A lot of them are just prideful and, and think they're qualified to teach and you know just call everybody lost. Oh, I, oh, I muted his mic. But yeah, you know, these, these little kids, you know, I mean, I'm not against someone just making videos, which is what I do, but it's like, I don't, I don't claim to be in ministry. I don't, I don't claim to be a preacher or that kind of stuff. Um, I just make short videos talking about Bible doctrine and that kind of stuff. I don't, I don't do like in-depth studies or that kind of stuff uh, because I'm too young. I, you know, I'm not qualified. Um, these young kids who just come out and, like they've been saved for like a year or two and think they're qualified to teach the word of God. So, you know, oh, you're back. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, I had to go put the dog out. If you know what I mean. Oh, I see. Yeah. I meant to uh, type it in the private chat, but I just. just... Uh, Jacob, and I'm only assuming this from his website, the donation page, I get the. He, he seems to imply that he's an elder. <laughs> really so, so jt a guy a guy who's like less a guy who's less than four years older than i am i'm 19 he's like 20 22 he thinks he's an elder i mean that it shows he's got a lot of pride issues yeah i think your videos are excellent by the way john because the short and sweet yeah speech, um they're within the sort of the sentence band in yeah, wait. That, that's the thing. Most people just they have short attention spans. They can't deal with like long, drawn out sermons. They just want a short video, and that's it. Yeah, I think you could do longer sermons, John, with a bit more preparation and a bit more harm. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it's it's just funny. So a guy who who is in his twenties, like like barely in his twenties, fancies himself as an elder. I mean, you got you gotta love that. That's ridiculous. He's married, isn't he, John? Uh, I think he might be. I don't know. I was told he is. Well, Tim, the way he was talking about Jacob and his pet Jezebel wife. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, JT I is... I said that about Jacob. I would never do that to Jacob's wife or Brian Denley's wife. But, yeah, I mean, I think he is married. Yeah, and, and the comment that, that you're, I think you're referring to was... And, and what happened was that before he left that comment, JT went on Tim's video, basically showing that Brian was covering up his sin, and was just railing and ripping on Tim. And I wish I had taken screenshots of JT's comment. I mean, JT, he's a, just a bitter, nasty like little child. Uh, believe me, he like he's very nasty and bitter. But um, he was just ripping and railing on Tim, and because he because JT couldn't deal with the fact that he was wrong, you know, because he's a kid, he's prideful. 
So, uh, and he and Tim and Tim are going back and forth, and, and Tim, you know, just blocked JT. He said, you know, I'm blocking JT because, you know, he, he's a child, uh, immature child, and he's an idolater of Brian Dillinger, and is basically putting Brian above the word of God, and it's, it's basically whatever Brian says goes. And he's right. I mean, JT is, is just an idolater of Brian Dillinger. He doesn't, he doesn't question what Brian says, and it just, if Brian says it, that, that means it's true, apparently. And, oh. and that, that's kind of the thing about mostly these, these Dillinger followers, even the ones that are kind of like a little bit older too, like like in their 50s or 60s, a lot of them are just very childish, and a lot of them behave like children. That's the thing. Yep, it doesn't matter if they JT 21. Okay, so he's 21 years old, um, but yeah, he fancies himself as an elder, you know. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, I'm, I'm 19, so I'm two years younger than he is, and so it's like someone like that's way too young to be an elder. You know. Yeah. H hence why the word is called elder. I would say an elder would at least have to be about 30 or 40, married with children, I think. Yeah, I would say at least in their 30s because that, that's when Jesus Christ got into ministry in his 30s. So it's like I, if I was like a pastor or something, I, I wouldn't or I wouldn't send somebody out to be a, a minister until it, it, it they're at least in their thirties, and and you know, that kind of stuff. Like like, like some young kid in his twenties has been saved, and also in their thirties and have been at least saved for like more than two or three years at least, you know. Yeah. That kind of thing, because like some young kid has been saved for like a year or so, and you know, uh. Shepherd Tabasha said he was born in 1989. I was born in 2001, so. Uh, <laughs> You're all puppies. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're all you know little kids. Well, I'm I'm probably the youngest one, um, but it's it just it's ridiculous. But you're very unique, John. How many Christians do you know, your age, that teach the King James Bible? I mean, I. Can't find. I mean, I mean, I've been, I've been, I, I've been told that a lot. I mean, mo, you know, like most kids my age, I mean, aren't even Bible believers, let alone King James Bible believers. Yeah, yeah. I looked at that guy, uh, end time teacher. Uh, another one, Hebrew roots, totally uh, foolish video. I, I think he, I think he might be a black Hebrew Israelite because from from what yeah. I see from his videos, no, he's not black. He's a white guy. Well, yeah, but the Hebrew Israelites they accept white people who basically um, oh, basically yeah. bow down and worship them. I, I've seen like you know they'll have basically if you're a white person who like admits to the quote unquote sins of your race and yeah. like you basically just essentially worship black people, then you you are accepted in the group apparently. Yeah. yeah. I, I I know that because I actually was talking with him one time and. He, he, he told me that basically Satan is the white man, which is what the Hebrew Israelites believe, black Hebrew Israelites believe. So he, I think, I think he might be a follower of the black Hebrew Israelites. Yeah, yeah but, but he, he, he's, he's done a couple of videos on me. I mean, yeah, like me and him kind of, you know, we're going back and forth ever since February of this year. Um, yeah. Because it first started when I, I did a video, um, I think it was on... Uh, Babylon being the Roman Catholic Church because one of the doctrines of the Hebrew Israelites is, the black Hebrew Israelites is they believe that Babylon is America they don't believe it's the Roman yeah. Catholic Church and, and, and it's like it's like they, 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 are, they are against Roman Catholicism but they don't believe it's Mystery Babylon so uh, I did a video on Mystery Babylon and he tried to say that, that Mystery Babylon is America and not the Roman Catholic Church and basically I kind of I tried to, I tried to, you know, we're going back and forth. The next day, he tells me, he, I think he tells me he did a video on me, so I, I checked it out, did a response, and then he does, I think, um, I mentioned something about hell, because the Hebrews, like, they also don't believe in hell either. They think that hell is just a condition on earth. They don't believe it's like a literal place of torment. So oh. he, so we, we start going back and forth about hell. So then he does a video refuting me on hell too, trying to refute me, my position that hell is actually a literal place of torment. So then, you know, I, I don't respond to that video. Um, so then we're, you know, we're just going back and forth. And I do a video, like I think a month later, on polygamy, showing that polygamy is a sin. He does a video refuting, trying to refute that video too. And then it's like, he, it's like he just like, I don't, I don't know what, I don't know, you know, I don't know. But it's like he's done lots of videos trying to refute me on some stuff. And 
uh, then like I think he did a video. I he did a video. Uh, his two recent ones are like you know refuting refuting me on polygamy again. So it's like he's done probably at least about five or six videos on me. Yeah, so. Jesus was in the temple at age twelve. Yeah. Been things with the scribes and the Pharisees and the lawyers and whatever. Yeah, but he but he is God though, so it's like you know, it's different for him. I don't think I don't. Could you say he was preaching? I, well, you could you could say, well, you know, but at the same time, you know, he was he is he was God. Well, he is God manifest in the flesh. He is coming in the flesh, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so it's like. Yeah. yeah. But I, I see where you're coming at. You know, he he definitely went to the temple because yeah, I think I think in uh, uh, in Judaism they believe that when you're twenty, like you're thirteen or twelve, you're basically an adult at that point. So yeah, they, you, at that age you stop being taught by your mother. Yeah. And then your father takes up. Well, I mean, say father, your dad takes over. It's habit, that you know that word. Your dad takes over and takes you under his instruction. Then. Yeah. You well, it, it's it's like in uh, it's, it's like in, in uh, Judaism, or uh, like in Orthodox Judaism over in Israel, uh, you'll see like like twelve year olds. They like once they turn twelve, they go off to start studying the Torah, studying the Torah, and you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they have their bar mitzvah, and, you know, and and uh, like you'll see them studying the Torah, and, and um, you know. So, so you know that's that's the thing. Yeah, but so this Hebrew is like guy. So yeah, he he's done like lots of videos on me and you know refuting me and some stuff I said and mm-hmm. you know so so it started when he did a video trying to refute me on I think he did two videos trying to refute me on the um, I think it was America being Babylon and then he he tries to refute me like there's a video trying to refute me on he does two videos trying to refute me uh, trying to refute me saying that hell is actually uh, not like like saying that hell is basically not a place of torment and saying that I'm wrong for saying that it's a place of torment. Then he does a video trying to refute me on polygamy being a sin or something, and then yeah. there's two more videos trying to refute me on that too. So, uh, possibly he's trying to make a name for himself or something. I don't know. And, and that's kind of funny too because I I you know. Uh, I, I've I've just I've come across some videos that atheists have done about me and stuff, and you know, uh, it's like I, I've come across a couple. I think I think it was one video I came across, but it's like I did some videos recently, just like sl- slamming atheism. So I guarantee you, there's gonna be some videos about me by atheists, you know, trying to debunk me or whatever, because uh, that's what atheists do. You do a video about atheists, and they'll be just doing something or debunking you or whatever. Um, I have that happen a lot. I'll come up with stuff attacking atheism. Then atheist people will do videos refuting me. I've had that happen to me a lot. Yeah. You know, they, they want to argue about somebody who they do not believe exists, which, which uh, makes them fools, really. Yeah. Isn't it, you know? Exactly. They want they want to argue, you know, about something, about basically about something that doesn't even exist. You know, or, or that they think doesn't exist. So, it's like, you know, I guarantee you, someone will take that out of context and say, "See, John Kragen denies God." Um, that's going to happen probably. But in their mind, in their mind, God doesn't exist. So why are you obsessed with trying to disprove? Why are you obsessed with attacking him? You know, it's weird. Well, we're not. I mean, somebody said to me, and he's right, you should keep an eye on Jesus Christ, absolutely, 100%. Yeah, exactly. expose these people. I mean, not every day, uh, doing two or three videos a day and all that sort of thing. But if we don't point it out, if, we don't, if, if none of the Bible-leading Christians point it out, and people are just going to walk into it. Yeah. Like... like I mean, Mike, if I was walking down the street with you, John, and I saw a piece of dog poop on the side of the road, I'd point it out here and say, avoid, you know, obviously. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and if I say nothing, what to do? I'll let you walk through it, walk into it or something? Well, no. Yeah. No, no, we have to establish the truth. Yeah. So, yeah, so I, I just found two videos 
Yeah, exactly. You know, it is it is biblical to expose evil. That's the thing. So, yeah. I, I I just found two videos that have been done about me. Um, it's just another way of doing it because if Brian was communicable, if he could talk to him, if he could email, and he doesn't put his email out, if he could go on. I mean, you tried to Skype him and talk to him. Yeah, I asked him, "Hey, can I add you on Skype?" And he 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 basically told me no. <laughs> yeah. And King's Table, when he's he's done quite a few live streams. Uh, I'm not his disciple or anything. But asking people to come in, ask questions. He puts his email up. Does he get any responses? Well, no, he doesn't. Yeah. They, they won't talk, John. What are they frightened of? Yeah. But like, what are they hiding? Exactly. I mean, what, like, what are they hiding? Like, what are they so afraid of? But here's here's one video about me. Uh, it's called it's called just oh, Kragen, and they mirrored it. Um, but it basically was. Of trying to like respond to a video I did, um, basically saying that how I got out of atheism and how I'm a former atheist, and they're they're basically responding to me, and you know, that's what that's one video they've done about me, and then here's the other one. You just Google John Craig and atheism, and then this yeah. stuff comes out. Uh, how to defeat atheist response to John Craig, and so uh, those are the two videos so far I found that atheists have done about me. Yeah, who's this fella called Guy? Uh. Then I I don't know. Couple of back to he says I haven't seen you two in a while. Has Guy been on your live streams lately? Hmm. I, I'm not I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna play the videos the atheists have done about me because I I watch both of them and, and they're using profanity so I'm oh, not gonna bother playing them but it's just funny how they just attack me so much. Yeah. 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 Have any of the gentlemen who have been in contact with you, John? Because they do have your email address, don't they? Uh, none of them have been in contact with me. And, you know, the thing about the Denlinger rights is that there are, like, a, a select few of them I would actually even talk to. Because a lot of them are just really immature and, and just don't... There's basically, they're just these yes-men to Brian Denlinger. So, it's like, there's no point. Um, yeah. But there are some of them I definitely would, you know, maybe talk to. But a lot of them are just... are They're not, they're not really mature enough for me to, like bother talking to them because they're they're just going to aim at everything Brian says and they're not going to question anything he says. Oh, I think Shepard's ambassador is a builder. Is yeah. he a builder? A builder. Yes, uh, someone says, uh, Anonymous A says, I'm sorry to see Brian doing a true color slowly. Yeah, I mean, you know, I did too. Um, I was seeing pro actually, I'll just put, put the comment on the thing. I was seeing problems way back in June with, you know, how they treated Tim and how his followers were not, were not, were not looking at Tim's side of the story. They were just, just blindly following Brian and calling Tim lost because he basically dared to question the man of God. And I was seeing problems ever since then. And then eventually I came up with a video, uh, just attempting to lovingly correct Brian. And then Diotrephes Aaron Deering comes out and, you know, attacks me and, revokes my salvation because I committed the sin. I, I guess I, I committed I committed the unpardonable sin of, of disagreeing with Brian. So Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he, he I mean he, I guess I guess he visited heaven and plucked I guess plucked me out of God's hand or whatever. But he he attacked me and then they all just called me lost because I because I dared to question the Pope. You know, I, I dared to speak against the man of God. So, you know, I've I've had my salvation revoked. So um and, and this, is what they, this is what they do. Anyone who questions Brian is lost. That's what they do. Well, they're going to get uh, booted, aren't they? They're going to get... Um, they're going to get... Uh, well, treated badly. Yeah. They'll get uh, blocked. And, 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 and just the way they treated him just shows that even those who are really close to Brian will get treated like garbage the moment they attempt to rebuke Brian. I love Tim to bits me, John. I disagree with him on one particular issue. I wouldn't sort of go hard at it and say it's not fair, but I know for a fact he's a saved man. As a Dewey Davey Maritime Bible believer. Yeah, they're saved. I enjoyed talking to Tim. Uh, he's a nice lad. He's not an e what, what did Deering call him now? An evil, wicked, something or other devil. Well, d d uh, Diotrephes Deering called him a rotten devil, which, you know. Yeah, a rotten devil, that's it. 
Yeah, and keep in mind he hold on brought in devil just because he attempt just because he attempted to rebuke Brian. So apparently Brian can't be rebuked at all. Apparently, which you know, yeah. it's, it's wicked. He won't uh, rebuke uh, Jacob for his skanky book, though, will he? Yeah, he, he won't rebuke Jacob for no. this this uh, graven image. I guess I guess if 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 this is supposed to represent Jesus Christ, it's a graven image because you're not supposed to make images of, images of the Godhead. That's yeah. the thing. I wonder how long you've been a builder, Tony. Oh. Oh, you think I'm called Guy? No, my name's Bob. Oh. Well, I, I'm gonna be heading out now. Um, oh, I don't want to like oh, overuse my stream. What? You going, John? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to, you know, overuse my streaming limit because I think I'm actually. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Can, how... You what? can get more out as easily. You just use a different yeah. email, you know, and you can still stream to the same channel. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I probably I probably will be going live tomorrow too, um, but I'm gonna be heading out now. So. Oh, you know, I can't just wait to stay then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think the left here is more lonely than nobody to talk to. <laughs> oh, you know. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, we definitely have the because I mean, you know. Because now, now my, my province, Ontario, is on lockdown, so I, you know, I can't go to work now, so... Oh. So it, it's like, I, I basically have all day to stream now, pretty much. Yeah. So, uh, I'll probably be going live tomorrow at some point, so... Well, you let me know on Twitch, if you want. But yeah. If you come in, or if you don't need me, or whatever, I'm not... Oh, no, I, I, I enjoy your company. You know, I, I enjoy your company. And get a gun back to this, Tony. Yeah. And, and you know, any anyone anyone can come in. I mean, I, I'm not like some kind of cult leader where you have to agree with me on every single point, or else I, you know, condemn you to hell. Anyone can can come in. We can talk. You know, we can if you have questions, whatever. You know. You can use the manners. That's all I would be bothered about. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. E e even through a deadlinger follower, hey, you know, hey, you know, if you think I'm lost, hey, how would you come to get to know me? Get to know me personally before, you know. That kind of thing. That, that's the thing. That would be crypt tonight too, John. If you come in here, that's it. We get the salvation of this book. Yeah. I well, would prefer genuine King James Bible even Christians coming in. Those well, yeah, so, exactly. I mean, I, I, I would limit it to King James Bible believers. I mean, yeah. if there's like if there's like an atheist or like a Satanist or whatever, I'd say yeah, you know, get saved, obviously. But what's that you play? about with on your table. Oh, I was trying to get the lid off my bottle. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, we're ending the broadcast now. So. Okay, John. God bless you, brother. God bless you. Thank you to everyone that, that joined. What the? Oh. Sorry, I saw something. But, yeah. Pray for me, John. Won't you? I'll oh, yeah, I will definitely, yeah. And Tony. Yep. Tony the builder.